and I took inventory of the density of the presence of God that our prayer meetings were invoking. And I found out that even though we're praying for long, the density of God's presence was not commensurate to our effort. Oh, you're not with me, oh my God. <laughs> and as I tried to find the reason behind this shortfall, turning my face to God, he said, your people know how to exercise their spirit, but they do not know how to yield. Listen. Welcome to Reminant Apostolic TV. Here you'll be getting powerful messages that will change and transform your life. Thank you. Luke chapter 1, verse number 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am, am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee this glad tidings. Now, the first question I need to ask us quickly as we take our journey, you are not where I am, stop. You are not where I am, stop, 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 stop. Stop, 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 stop. The first question I need to ask us tonight is, you know, Gabriel had need to introduce himself. The introduction of himself was not part of the errand he was dispatched from heaven to give. But when he saw unbelief, he had to unveil his credentials. I am Gabriel, and I stand in the presence of God. See, this aspect of the discussion is no longer the errand he was sent to deliver. This, is, this came up. This, this resulted. This is a product of unbelief. So there was need for introduction. I was, I was thinking that introductions should take place before the message is delivered. But he did not come to advertise himself. He just came to deliver the message. It was when the message was doubted that he, he had to introduce himself. He said, I am Gabriel. And it will interest you to know that I stand in the presence of God. The first question I have for you tonight is, where was Zachariah standing? You're not answering me. Oh, is that how you answer in Manchester? <laughs> where was Zachariah standing? He was standing in the presence of God. And Gabriel was coming to tell him about another dimension of the presence of God, which he obviously doesn't know. That's the reason why he's doubting the message. Now, so what I'm trying to show you from that piece is that there are dimensions in God. Zechariah was standing in the dimension of the presence of God where prayer is manufactured. And Gabriel was coming from the dimension of the presence of God where prayer is answered, where decrees are given. And it's as if Zechariah only knows where prayer is manufactured. He doesn't understand the language that is associated with the realm where prayers are answered. So when we talk about the journeys of prayer, we are talking about the privileges that God gives us by his spirit to explore him as a person and his realm. Are you there? So there are places in Christ Jesus, and those are spiritual locations where spiritual things and realities are deposited. 
Now, when, when you begin to do prayer, part of what God is expecting of us is that he wants to give us the privilege to explore God as astronauts explore space. Are you there? So, he begins to give you a taste of various dimensions that reside in him. And, uh, hallelujah. Do you realize that the utterance you spoke under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when you spoke in tongues yesterday is different from the utterance you spoke under the same inspiration of the Holy Ghost when you spoke in tongues today? It's not repetition. The utterance is unique. And when the body begins to intensify, the gear changes. It was not manipulated by your wisdom, but it was manipulated by the Holy Ghost because he's using you to give substance to something that is spiritual. And there's an utterance that is consistent with that unique experience in God. And that's why God cannot be put in a formula because he's new every morning. You will need to seek him out every single day. And as you explore him, what you encounter today is not quite like what you experienced yesterday. He wants us to be at home with exploring him as astronauts explore space. So what I'm saying is, Zachariah was a novice of that realm where prayers are answered. But it is possible for you to travel into that realm. Understand the protocol that is in that place. Understand the shape of that dimension. Understand how to interact with realities that are domiciled in that space. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. James, there's one guy that used to play the keyboard for us those days. Where is he? He's not here today. Okay. Please, can we pray together? Can we? <laughs> Lord, we, we ask that... Uh, you help us. Help me and help your, your, bro, your son in Jesus' name. So I'll ask you to join me in 15 minutes. The first thing you need to do is to look for strings, strings, just, and then you find the right progression because I'm somewhere. When you, when you locate where I am, you create a sound that looks like that place. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what. Wow. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please help me tell your neighbor, God has called us to explore. Your Christian life is going to be on the same level if you fail to explore. Your scent will not change. Your spiritual aroma will not change. Your context, your capacity, and your ability in the spirit will not change until you decide to explore. So there's an open invitation for us to come and explore the realms of God. And that's what we mean by the journeys of, of prayer. All right. I'm going to give you three definitions, if it will hold, of what I mean by the dimensions of God. Are you there? Yes. Number one, spirit dimensions are spiritual realities and realms in heaven. Spirit dimensions are spiritual realities and realms in heaven that God allows your spirit man to come in contact with when you yield to the Holy Ghost. He allows your spirit to touch dimensions in him. It happens to be that the Holy Ghost is the one that exercises guardianship over the realms of God. Are you there? And that's why Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It means that the organic or experiential description of what it means to be born again is that the Holy Ghost in you will give you access to the knowledge of the things that is domiciled in the realm of God. The Greek word for see in that scripture is eido, which means to perceive by reason of the use of senses. Now, what I mean by that is this. Jesus was telling Nicodemus, that you see, when you were in your mother's womb, at nine months, you had eyes, but the eyes were not relevant because the eyes were not designed to function inside of the womb. You had ears, 
but your ears were not relevant because they were not designed to function inside of the womb. It was when you were born from the womb and you came out of the womb that your eyes became relevant when light hit them. Your ears became relevant because sound waves from outside hit your eardrums. Jesus is saying that when a man becomes born again, the Spirit of God comes to domicile his spirit and the Spirit of God activates his spiritual senses so he has the capacity to perceive things that, that exist in the realm of God. You will need to be born again first in order for you to have that ability. That was Jesus' organic way, experiential way of defining what it meant to be born again. So the moment the Spirit of God comes and becomes installed in your spirit, oh my God, you are not with me. What, what kind of phone do you use? It's not the one you like, iPhone. Oh, you, oh, no, no. All right, I have my Samsung, and I'm not a marketer for Samsung, but the phone I use is Samsung. When you buy a Samsung phone from the store, the phone has a lot of ability. You can store music in the phone, you can listen to the music, but the phone is not a radio. The reason for which you got the phone will not be realized until you insert a SIM card. The moment you insert the SIM card, the SIM card knows how to interpret the frequency the GS of the GSM network. And then a new field of possibility becomes accessible to the phone, and the phone can manipulate the potential of the GSM network. Are you with me? In the same way, the moment the SIM card, which is the Holy Ghost, is inserted in your human spirit, you can access, access network, <laughs> heavenly network, the divine space. Did you get it to that point? Yes. Okay. So the, the realm becomes available to you for exploration. Just like, oh, is it Mark? Oh, Matt. Now, so, so he, 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 he can have his phone here in Manchester, and I'm in my village in Nigeria, and we are doing something like a video call. I say, hey, we are building. Can you see the pillar? <laughs> All of that is possible. My phone is working with the potential of the GSM network to connect Matt to my village. He can explore the realms of, of my room in another space that you will need seven hours flight time to come into. But because of the potential of the network, he can explore. He knows exactly the colors. He knows how the pillars are. You know, because of GSM network. So God makes his spirit available, and then his spirit gives us access to a realm. And the Bible even reveals that the spirit of God searches all things. That is, he can search your physics. He can search your engineering. Just in case you don't know where to look, he can search it and give you an idea. So he searches all things, but even the deep things of God, meaning that with the Holy Ghost, we are up for exploration. Please tell somebody, with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Ghost we, are we are up for exploration. exploration. When you begin to explore God, you will now know the difference between alone and lonely. Adam was alone, but Adam was not lonely. Loneliness is an emotional situation. In fact, it's a, it's a very strange emotional situation. And that emotional situation is not supposed to be an experience that they, a believer knows. Because when you know how to explore the realms of God, oh my God, the void will be filled. Your human spirit is designed in such a way that only realities that are caught up in the eternities of God can satisfy. I'm just coming from Wales, and I, they were celebrating something. I was trying to find out, what celebration is this? I came out, and I took inventory of the faces of the people I was seeing. You know what? They were happy, but they were not joyful. Happiness is occasioned by happenings. And the moment the happening sees, it will fade away, and the loneliness, which is the emotional trauma, comes back, and that's Satan's perfume. He, he, he sprays it around, and he gets people down. If, if that's still a description of your story, it means you've not explored the possibilities that are bound in the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost comes to enable us to explore the realm of God. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. 
Unfortunately for us, the extent to which we can sustain this exploration is the degree to which we surrender when we pray. Now, it is good to pray long. I pray long. I teach people how to pray long. I detain people so that they can pray long. <laughs> yeah, I detain them. Hallelujah. I'm a rugged coach, actually. Very rugged. I detain people so that they can pray long. But I found out over the years that we got people to pray for long, but we did not teach people how to give themselves when they pray. So the guy is praying, but he's not yielding. He's exercising his spirit, but he's not bending. He is speaking in tongues, but he's not yielding to the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit cannot transport him. His spirit has charged, just like you charge the battery on your cell phone, but you refuse to use the phone. You refuse to take calls. Say, oh, it's going to affect my battery. You refuse to, to watch the videos. People send to you. Say, it will, it will compromise the capacity of my, of my battery. He's afraid to explore because he wants to keep his battery. So the battery is charged, but the, the reason for which he has stored the charge, he doesn't want to yield to explore that reason. So I found out that there was something wrong with our prayer meetings. Because I, I took inventory of the density of the presence of God that our prayer meetings were invoking. And I found out that even though we're praying for long, the density of God's presence was not commensurate to our effort. Oh, you're not with me, oh my God. <laughs> and as I tried to find the reason behind this shortfall, turning my face to God, he said, your people know how to exercise their spirit, but they do not know how to yield. Listen, oh my, the guardian, the one that is in custody of the realm that will grant you access to the realm. You see, are you there? Yes. When someone is initiated into witchcraft, the reason for the initiation is to bind that person under covenant to the spirit that manages that coven. Because that spirit is the guardian spirit that will give all the members of the coven access to the realm of witchcraft. There is no other way you can enter any realm that is in the spirit without the authority and the express permission of the guardian. Should I, should I tell you something? You don't know how to know God. None of us knows. Think about it. That you want to know God. Is that the reason why you will know him? Please help me tell your neighbor it's not by power. <laughs> there is a personnel that is saddled with the responsibility of giving you access. And as long as you don't know how to deal properly with him, you'll be denied access on Monday, on Tuesday, and on Sunday night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so the extent to which we can explore is dependent on our capacity to yield. I don't want to press that because of time. We, we have so much to cover during the course of this conference, and when we are done with the theoretical aspect, then we'll do the, the practical aspect. We'll do the actual adventure, all right? We'll simulate it. Someone, one of our church members went to France to learn how to become a pilot. So when they finished the theoretical aspect, he told me, yeah, I scored 90, I scored 90, great. I said, Holy Spirit, thank you. He thought the course had ended. And then they, they put them into in the simulator. It, it's not a plane, but it has everything that the plane has, all those buttons, you know? Don't you get dizzy when you see the buttons? <laughs> all those buttons, they were there. So he had to, to ride the plane in simulated mode. And uh, if you crash, you will feel as though you have crashed. <laughs> so he, he did the first one, he came out, he called me and said, so what we are going to do when we finish the theory, we'll do the simulation, simulation. And we'll know if you have crashed. That's, that's what I'm saying. We'll, we'll. <laughs> if you are still here, say amen. 